Hi, my name is Simon Alexandersson and I'm from the Division of Speech, Music and Hearing at KTH in Stockholm. And this is a presentation of the Style Gestures entry for the Genia 2020 challenge. The Style Gestures entry follows closely our Eurographics paper titled Style Controllable Speech Driven Gesture Synthesis Using Normalizing Flows. Uh, and this is built on our recently proposed Moglo architecture, which will be published at SIGGRAPH Asia this year. Moglo is a general model for controllable motion synthesis. The model is probabilistic, which means that it does not only describe one possible outcome, but attempts to model all outcomes and how likely they are. This property has many uh, interesting aspects for gesture synthesis as people typically do not use the same gestures every time they say the same thing. Style Gestures was developed to adapt Moglo for speech-driven gesture synthesis. It allows for generation of full body gestures, including stance shifts, head motion, and even stepping motion. And it also supports for an optional style control, so you can specify uh, properties of the gesturing, such as the gesture speed, spatial extent, or symmetry. In this entry, we restricted the method for, uh, to synthesize only upper body motion without any style control. Here is a figure of the style gesture system. Green elements are inputs and blue outputs. The idea is to treat motion as a stochastic sequence of poses and to model the probability distribution of the next step pose using normalizing flows. The probability distribution is conditioned on previous poses and an external control signal. In our case, this is the audio signal and the optional style control. After initialization, a motion is generated pose by pose in an autoregressive manner. Normalizing flows consists of a sequence of invertible transforms, so-called flow steps which subsequently transform a simple distribution to a complex one, representing the distribution of the observations. Since each transform is invertible, the sequence can be reversed and the model is optimized by maximizing the likelihood of the latent distribution. Usually, the latent distribution is chosen to be a Gaussian, and during synthesis, new outputs are generated by transforming samples drawn from this uh, latent distribution. And I just want to mention that the conditioning information in our model is fed into the neural network uh, in the affine coupling layer of each flow step. In addition to our base style gestures implementation, I prepared two systems for comparison and possible improvements. In the first system, I replaced the LSTM in the affine coupling layer with a gated recurrent unit network. This was done to see if comparable results could be obtained with a shorter training time and fewer parameters. The second system is based on our recent ICML workshop on the invertible networks paper, where we applied ideas from robust statistics to normalizing flows. We showed that changing the latent distribution from a Gaussian to a student T distribution makes model training more robust and less sensitive to outliers. My hope was that this would have some positive effects on uh, the Genea challenge due to no noisy motion capture data or uncommon gestures uh, seen in the data set. So uh, I used the challenge data to train three systems. In this data set, there is one male actor speaking freely on different topics. It contains about four hours of speech and motion capture data. Here are some example gestures generated from the three systems. I'm like, no, that means something bad. Here, get in the ball, run around for like five hours. I don't care. Just like, I'll put you in the ball five times a day. Just, <laughs> just stop by in the cage. I like, I, I'm so bad with animals that don't give like emotional feedback because then I just like start freaking like, what if we need, what if it needs more things? Like, like I'd freak out about a
I'm like, no, that means something bad. Here, get in the ball, run around for like five hours. I don't care. Just like, I'll put you in the ball five times a day. Just stop, just stop by in the cage. I like, I just, I'm so bad with animals that don't give like emotional feedback because then I just like start freaking like, what if we need, what if it needs more things? Like, like I'd freak out about a I'm like, no, that means something bad. Here, get in the ball, run around for like five hours. I don't care. Just like, I'll put you in the ball five times a day. Just stop, just stop by in the cage. I like, I just, I'm so bad with animals that don't give like emotional feedback because then I just like start freaking like, what if we need, what if it needs more things? Like, like I'd freak out about a Unfortunately, I did not have the time to perform a large scale study to assess the differences. Instead, I inspected random samples from the three systems to see if I could observe any salient patterns. My impression was that the base system and the studentizing systems were very similar, and that the GRU system generated more artifacts and less varied gesticulation. I chose the base system for my challenge entry. The Junia organization performed two subjective studies comparing all submitted systems. Style gestures is labeled SC in these evaluations. In the first study, participants were asked to rate the human likeness of the motion with no sound present. We see that style gestures ranked number two among the submitted systems and was only significantly worse than the natural recordings. The second study involved both gesture and speech. Here the participants could hear the speaker and they were asked to rate how appropriate the gestures are to the speech. The results show that style gestures ranked number one among the submitted systems and again was only significantly worse than the natural recording. Here is an ordering diagram that shows ranking and significance among the systems. Overlapping ellipses means no significance. And now to some discussion. We can see that style gestures performed well, even though we only used acoustic signals as input to the system. The uh, system's ability to generate head motion and arm swinging may have contributed to high naturalness ratings. We also see that we need a better data set with less vivid gesticulation in order to assess appropriateness. This as the mismatch condition rated higher than most entry systems. Having such dataset may also help evaluating architectural decisions during development. Performing some data cleanup may improve output quality as the challenge dataset is quite noisy. Using studentizing flows for improved robustness to outliers looks promising, although I did not have time to properly uh, evaluate the results. So for future challenges, I will try exploiting text features and language models. I will pre-train the models on external data and also incorporate finger movements. So that was all for me. Uh, thank you very much and now I'm ready for questions.